Hi there, my name is Susie and I'm a second year math student here at Warwick. Now when I was coming to university, one of the first big differences I found between university and sixth form was that instead of having just classes, my timetable was made up of lectures and seminars. I didn't really know what the difference was and because everything was online learning when I first came to university, it was uh, a bit more difficult to tell the difference. But now that Warwick has started doing a lot more face-to-face -face teaching and I'm, now that I'm doing a lot more in-person stuff, um, I thought it'd be a good time to kind of go over some of the differences between the two of them and some of the similarities as well and hopefully explain to you guys what it's going to be like and what in fact those two things even mean. So before we get onto the similarities versus differences, uh, I guess I better just explain to you what lectures and seminars look like for me. So uh, in general, a lecturer is just when a lecturer, who is one of the, you know, the staff members at the university, they will be at the front or they will be on a Teams meeting or whatever, and they will just give a lecture. They will work through new content that you haven't seen before, whether that's things like theorems, proofs, definitions, you know, anything like that where they are just giving information to you. Whereas uh, in a seminar, for most modules, you are given a workly uh, question sheet. And so in a seminar, the expectation is that you and your seminar leader, who is going to be like a, a postgrad student or a PhD student or whatever, they're going to be helping you work through the questions. Um, so in the seminars, you're, you're doing the questions, you're actually working through it yourself. Whereas in the lecture, most of the time, it's you're trying to just absorb all the information that's being given to you. So onto the differences. Some of the differences I have mentioned already. So for example, the fact that just the content is going to be varying very wildly between seminars and lectures, because in lectures, it's just about the lecturer getting all of the information to you. You don't necessarily have to understand it on the first time, you just have to try to be absorbing as much of it as possible and trying to kind of, you know, make those connections, make those those links in understanding. Whereas when you get to a seminar, because you are being asked to work through the questions, you have to try and be able to apply the knowledge that you've accumulated. Uh, another mention, another one that I've already mentioned is you will have a lecturer for lectures and a seminar leader for seminars. Um, and because the seminar leader is a student, you know, I, I've i never found any of the lecturers unapproachable and most of them have office hours and more, you know, you can go up to them after the lecture and ask questions and they will walk you through stuff. But I found um, seminar leaders a lot more approachable in terms of asking questions. Just I think because they are, you know, they are students who were going through the exact same thing a couple of years ago, so I think it's it's a lot less intimidating uh, for me to to ask questions to the seminar leaders. But I have asked lecturers questions as well, and I think the lecturers, because they're teaching the material, if I ever have a question about, oh, I didn't understand, you know, this step of the proof, I'll often go to a lecturer because they, you know, <laughs> they're the one who wrote the, the proof in the notes, or they're the one who's giving proof to you whereas if I have a question about oh I don't understand how do we do this kind of thing or what does this question mean or how do I answer this question that's when I'll normally go to a seminar leader because you know it's their job to help you work through the content. Um, another big difference that you'll find is the class sizes so in lectures at the moment most of my in-person lectures have about 100 to 200 people in whereas some of my online lectures have like 400 math students in I think um, we were a very big year for maths, so that's, I think, actually one of the reasons why we can't have some in-person stuff is because our classes are so big. Um, but then in a seminar, you're getting a lot smaller sizes, so the biggest seminar I'm in has, I think, about 20 people in it. Um, and that is a deliberate choice, because when it's, when it's a lecture, it's not really meant to be, I think, everyone's kind of meant to be getting the same experience. Versus in a seminar, it's a lot more of like a personalizable experience. Um, most of the seminars that I'm in will start with the seminar leader going, okay, so of the question sheet, which questions did you guys struggle with? We'll go over those ones, which is really useful because you know you're not you're not wasting time on something you don't not, you don't already understand, and you can just go straight to the the bits that you don't understand. So it is a lot more of a personalizable experience. Um, <laughs> but that does have the flip side which, depending on how, how you see it, could be a positive or a negative, that seminars require a lot more audience participation. Um, you can just sit in there and not answer the questions and not engage with the material, but I think that's kind of 
a waste of everyone's time. Um, but seminars by design, you are meant to be answering the questions. And sometimes, you know, the seminar leader will, will just go off on a bit of a tangent and be like, well, I know that we're meant to do it this way, but what if we tried to prove it this way instead? And that's a really good time to, you know, be testing yourself on your own maths um, and putting your hand up on answering those questions. Whereas in lectures, a lot of the time, it is it is more just you are part of a very big audience and the lecturer is giving it to all of you, giving all the information to all of you. Okay, and on to the similarities. Um, a very easy similarity that I can just kind of get out of the way is that both seminars and lectures are the same length. Um, my seminars and my lectures normally start about five minutes past the hour and then end five minutes to the hour so that, you know, if you have to like get anywhere between lectures, uh, you have the time to do that. But both of them, are, you know, they're an hour, they're an hour long, give or take a couple of minutes. Um, so that's something where I going in, I didn't know what was going to be happening for me. I know that some of my friends do have modules where you have like two hour long lectures, but I don't have to do that, which I'm quite thankful for, because um, that would be quite a lot of work for me. Um, yeah, um, and another similarity is that you are encouraged to ask questions. I know that I've been talking a lot about how you know, they're very different experiences and that you're meant to be asking questions in seminars, but you are you are meant to ask questions in lectures too if you don't understand it. I mean, lecturers will often, or my lecturers will often stop the lecture and be like, so does anyone have any questions? You know, like every 20 minutes or so just to make sure that everyone's keeping up. Um, because they are both meant to be experiences which help further your understanding and one of the really good ways of furthering your understanding is to ask questions. So I don't want to kind of sit here and, and put people off asking questions in lectures because you are meant to ask questions in both of them. That's objectively, that's a thing that's meant to happen. Another similarity, which is more advice than anything is uh, get there early. Um, and I mean <laughs> early. Um, on my very first lecture, I think I walked in about 10 minutes early because I thought, you know, 10 minutes, that'll be fine. That's that's nice and punctual. Um, and the entire 200 person lecture theatre was nearly already full up. So it, this isn't to say, obviously, if you walk in late, you are still going to get a seat, but you do kind of have to do, do the walk of shame a little bit, which obviously no one actually cares, but it always feels mortifying when you're going through it. Um, and I don't know, I don't know why. I don't know if this is a mathematician thing or if this is a Warwick thing or if this just happens like every university everywhere, but in lectures and in seminars, no matter how early I seem to get there, the room is already like halfway full. And I promise that isn't just me being late, genuinely. Genuinely, it just seems to be you need to get there early if you want a good seat. Or if you, if you want to go in with like 10 people and you want to all sit together, definitely get there early. Um, and the final similarity um, that I think is a very, very important one and something you, you just need to keep in mind is that you need to be engaged in both your lectures and your seminars and you need to be actively trying to make an effort with the material. They are very different experiences and so how you are engaged in the lecture versus the seminar is going to be different but both of them ultimately are there to further your understanding and they're only worth as much effort as you put in. So I know sometimes I have some 9am lectures, I have some seminars that are like 6pm or something both of those, you know, I'm quite tired, I'm not in the mood for maths, but just being like physically present in a lecture or like in a meeting for a seminar or whatever, it, it just isn't, it isn't enough. And I definitely regret, especially with some of the content that I now am finding difficult to understand, I regret not paying attention the first time around because it's now just so much more effort now. Um, and lectures and seminars, you know, they work in tandem what you first learn in a lecture you then have to apply in a seminar and it, it it does all just build on each other in a very very useful way and a way that has definitely helped me improve my maths ability um <laughs> believe it or not as a math student um so yeah try and be as engaged and possible as possible in both your lectures and your seminars because otherwise why, why are you coming to university so I hope that has helped to explain the differences and the similarities between the two of them a little bit. Um, if not, you know, you're very free to leave me some questions and I hope, you know, either way that you're all having a lovely day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.